I'm going to see if I can draw the crown chakra symbol using sacred geometry. The crown chakra symbol is a mandala made up of a thousand petals with a triangle and a circle in the center. Its color is white, but most of the time you'll see it depicted as violet and it represents pure consciousness. If you want to draw this with me, all you're going to need is a compass, a straight edge, a pencil and something to use as a marker. I'm going to use a colored pencil. You can use whatever. My paper is much bigger than all of the previous chakras I've drawn. That's because this chakra is bigger. It's got a thousand petals. So the overall size of this symbol is going to be 30 centimeters squared. First thing I'm going to do is draw a line straight down the middle of the page. This is going to divide the page into two. It's going to be the middle of our symmetry. It doesn't have to go all the way to the top and the bottom. It's just in the middle. I've got my compass set to 3.5 centimeters. And I'm going to draw a circle right in the middle of the page. Then I'll move down to this intersection where the line crosses the circle. Put my compass point there, draw another circle. This is going to tell us where our triangle is. We can use these three points as the corners of the triangle. All we've got to do is connect them all together. And there's our triangle. So I'll keep my compass set at the same size as the other two circles and I'll just put it on this intersection here and go up a little bit and put a little mark that crosses the main circle. Now I'm going to find the horizontal line which will be 90 degrees from the center point. By drawing an arc at roughly 90 degrees then going back down to the corner of the triangle and drawing another arc so that will tell us where the horizontal line is. We'll come back to that in a sec. First, we're going to set the compass to this point here, right at the bottom, and draw a circle that's twice the size of the original circle. Now that tells us how wide the horizontal line needs to be. And I'll draw that by connecting the two arcs on the left to the center point and just going all the way through. So now we've got our triangle in the middle, that's all sorted. We need to figure out how to draw a thousand petals. To achieve that, it has to be 20 rows of 50 petals. That's the traditional way and I wanna honor and respect that. It took me all day to figure it out, but I found out the best way is to divide it into five, 10 times. So we'll do 10 sets of five circles around the outside and that'll give us 50 circles. So we need to figure out what size these circles are gonna be. To do that, I'm going to put the compass point on this intersection on the right of the center circle and I'm going to set it to meet this point right at the top. And I'll draw a semicircle. Then I'll put my compass point right at the top and set it so that it meets where that semicircle crosses the horizontal line. And this measurement here is going to be the size of the 50 circles. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle at the top. And the point where that circle crosses the other circle is where we're going to put the compass point and draw another circle. And we'll repeat that step all the way around the circle until we end up back in the same place. And then we'll have five circles. So our next set of five is going to be right opposite, go straight down to the bottom intersection and do the exact same thing but from the bottom. Just draw one circle and then work your way around at every point where the circles cross.
we need to figure out where to start drawing our next set of five circles. So we're going to use the top and bottom circles that we just drew. And we're going to follow the line until it meets this point here. It's hard to explain, so just look closely at the point. It's right next to the edge of the triangle. I'll put a little mark to show you where. And then we've got to find the point that's right below it, the one that mirrors it. So we can do that by following the top circle down to this point here. It also crosses the edge of the triangle. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So we're going to use these points by connecting these and drawing a line that goes all the way through this, the big circle, the big middle circle. The point where that line crosses the circle is going to be the point where we need to draw our next five circles. Just notice you can actually use these two points as well. That might be easier. So now we know where to draw our next set of five circles. We actually know where to draw the next 20 circles now. I'll use this point first, top left. And I'm just doing exactly the same thing that we did on the last sets of five circles. Just draw one circle and then work my way around until I've got five circles. Now that I've got those five circles done, I'm going to move on to the next point. Do the exact same thing for another set of five. And then you already know, I'm moving on to the next point at the bottom. And doing the same thing, drawing another five circles. All right, now we're up to 25 circles. I'll move over to the last point to draw our next set of five to bring us to 30 circles. All right, that's the last circle. So we've still got four more sets of five to go. To find where we have to start those, we're going to use these two triangles right at the top. They kind of look like my dog's ears. And what I'm going to do is join the top of that triangle to the center. And the point where that line crosses the circle is going to be the point that we start our next set of five circles.
do the same thing on the bottom on these triangles just connect the tip of those triangles to the center you don't actually have to draw the whole line we just need a mark where it crosses the circle those four marks are going to be the starting points for uh, the last 20 circles so we just do exactly the same as before just draw five circles at a time starting on each of the points And as we're going around, we're starting to see this nice grid form. And we've also got this circle appearing in the middle of the triangle. And that's going to be part of the symbol. Alright, we're almost there, we've just got one more circle to go, and then that will be 50 circles. That's all the geometry done now. Now we just have to reveal the symbol. So I'll just mark where it is. This is the center circle. Obviously we've got the triangle, and the bindu in the middle, the little circle. And so you see how we've got this grid. It's made up of just loads and loads of rows of diamonds. Each one of those diamonds is going to be a petal. And I'm just going to draw petals within each diamond. So there are 50 diamonds in each row. So that's going to be the 50 petals. And we need 20 rows of 50 petals. What I'm doing is just working my way around and just counting as I go until I get to 20. 20 times 50 is 1,000. And that is how you draw the crown chakra symbol using sacred geometry and that's going to be the end of this primary chakra series i did my best to honor these sacred symbols and i hope that came across learned so much in the process figuring out the geometry behind all of these sacred symbols huge respect to the ancient indians for sharing such beautiful symbols with the world if you found this useful let me know in the comments hit the like button and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching Ta -ra.